we can go ahead and for any event like let's say click on this icon we can report an event to the runtime that the fx have been tapped and you can see whenever i go ahead and click an icon we get this cool little animation to show that the event has been reported so let's go ahead and use this animation and listen to those events so i've gone ahead and loaded in the rive animation inside of our flutter window you can see this right here we can go ahead and hover over the icons select one make it the active one and the animation works but how do we know which is the active one like change this label to the active element to do that we need to listen for the event changes which is first of all applied inside of our animation so that is important so now i can go ahead and first of all on the on init callback get the artboard so we need to go ahead and just like getting the state machine inputs first of all we need to get the state machine controller and then add it to the artboard so our usual business let's go ahead and perform the same add the controller and now we have the usable state machine controller this video lesson is part of a bigger flutter drive animation course where we will cover how to set up state machines control inputs load custom font and image assets and everything related to the flutter drive api visit the link below in description and check out the same now let's get back to the video now here we can go ahead and use the state machine controller to add the event listener just like this we can go ahead and give it a callback so here i can go ahead and just do a null check and then for our event listener we can create a callback function or a method inside of a widget that is on rive event like this it will go ahead and receive the rive event object and now we can go ahead and use this event so let's go ahead and supply that here on rive event and for now let's go ahead and simply print that out that is the rive event let's hot restart and now if i go ahead and hover over the elements and change a active element you can see we get the event reported in our flutter side the event contains a lot of information about the event that just happened we have a type of the event that is the event can be a general rive event that is this right here that is just as it says a general event or a rive open url event sometimes you have a button and it has some cool animations done in rive and when it is clicked you just want to open a url for that we have this special type and with that we get some special attributes as well on the event that is when you have asserted that the event is of open url event you can access the url that is the string or the target as well in this case we have a general event so that's just fine and on the event we can access the name that is this right here and the properties so if we go inside the rive editor and inspect the events themselves that is here when we go ahead and change into the different states we go ahead and fire the corresponding event and in the event itself it has some properties which we can take a look at that is in the rive editor you can set the events name and add some properties to the same that is you can add a string property give it a id identifier to access or reference the same in the runtime and its value which can be changed in the animations something to note and you can add a string a number and a boolean as well so any property or data can be added to an event right within drive so you can go ahead and configure your events in the rive editor and then consume this events and the data in the flutter site 
In this case, we'll go ahead and pull out this label from the properties. So let's go ahead and print that out. We'll get a map of the properties, that is their IDs, that is the names and their value. So I can go ahead and click on layout. You can see we got a map with the label as layout, that is key value, index zero like this. So I can print out all the three. So here, let's go ahead and on the arrive event, we just want to go ahead and change this label to the corresponding or the active item. And now if I go ahead and try to just set the state, that is this text string right here to the events properties label like this. And if I go ahead and try to trigger the event, we will encounter an error because arrive events overlap with the widget rendering, which you can see in the error trace back. That is a set state was called in the layout or the paint callback. So to fix the same, we can go ahead and add the post frame callback using the widgets binding, get its instance, and then add a post frame callback. So if you want to set the state in the arrive event listeners, then that's how you do it. Just wrap it inside the add post frame callback of the widgets binding. So we can go ahead and now perform this right here. That is setting the state. Let's not use the value which is given. And now we can go ahead and hot restart just in case. And if I go ahead and click on the effects, nothing happens because we have to set the property. So a typo there. And now I can go ahead and test and you can see the value changes. Cool. So that's how we can listen for drive events in our Flutter site and use the events data to perform the things that needs to be done. So that's how we use drive events in Flutter.